Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now AMD's Phenom 2 X6 1090T wasn't the very first 6 core desktop CPU on the market. That honour goes to Intel with the i7-980X Extreme Edition. Before that, both AMD and Intel's Opteron and Xeon range offered 6 core workstation solutions, but the everyday desktop market was, much like it is today, primarily a dual and quad core playground. We could have covered the Intel, yes, but I feel we've been leaving AMD out a little bit recently. Not only that, but the 1090T was far more affordable to the everyday user, retailing at £240 or $295, as opposed to the 980X's $1,000 price tag. Sure, the i7 offered better performance, about 40% worth on paper, but for the extra $700, it can keep it. It launched with the other 6-core 1055T, but this one was the flagship. These days, the 1090T can be picked up for as little as £70 or $100 on sites like eBay or CEX. And because AM3 or AM3 Plus boards don't cost an arm and a leg, you could still build yourself a reasonably priced 6-core Phenom system. But should you? Well, to find out, we've installed a 1090T in our GTX 1060 system to see if it has what it takes to keep up. We'll also be taking a look at some overclocked results. Instead of trying to push this thing so hard that it maxes out all the time, we instead configured the game so that we achieved a nice balance of graphics and performance. Optimal settings, if you like. Before we get into that, let's talk about this CPU's other scores. In Cinebench R15, this thing scores 489 in the multi-core test, a little better than my i5-4460, which sticks at around the mid-470s, overclocked to 3.8GHz and the X6 touches 524. So let's get into the gaming performance. Far Cry Primal first at 1080p with the high settings, and we saw 55 FPS on average, with a minimum of 37. We've tried to find that nice balance between graphics and performance, which I feel has paid off pretty well here. Rise of the Tomb Raider, and well, this is where our X6 struggled a little bit. We saw frequent stutters, and this was the best setting to eliminate most of that. So you can imagine how the game ran when we changed anything. Setting things to low, and the CPU took more of a hit, causing further slowdown. So high settings with hairworks off gave us the best result. Outside of this forest, things improved, but I wanted to show you guys this level here, as it best represents how bad the game could get. Crisis 3 next, which looks good no matter what you set the game to. In this case, it was the high preset at 1080p to see 40 on average, with slowdowns to the mid-20s. Not a bad experience, but we'll get on to overclocking a bit later, which is where things improved. Finally, it's Watch Dogs 2. The recent patch fixed some stuttering for me on my main system, but most of the time the game still remains problematic and this system is no exception. The game hovered around the mid-30s with some serious slowdown as seen right here. But wait, there is a silver lining. We upped the speed of the CPU to 3.8GHz, any higher caused restarts, but this was the sweet spot. This is where things improved for the better. If you take a look at some results on screen right here, you'll see the frame increase, both to the minimum and average. I can happily say that this eliminated any stuttering in Tomb Raider as well, aside from the slight hiccup. Watch Dogs still run a little choppy, but if you were to opt for an older CPU like AMD's old 6-core flagship here, you'd have a half-decent experience. It's hard to recommend it because you can find the newer FX series like the 6300 or 8320 for similar prices, but if you'd like to own a piece of PC history that can still run games today, the X6 1090T is by no means a bad buy. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I'll leave all the links to my social media and my second channel down below if you want to check all of that out. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one.